It's November 2nd here in southwestern Ohio, and fall is kind of at nearing the end. Most of the color is gone, most of the leaves are off of the trees. Um, but as you drive around, the one color that you do notice is the burning bushes that people have in their yards. Um, they're bold. They're um, beautiful red color. Um, this one actually has lost most of its leaves, but it's retained most of its red color because of all the berries on it. Um, that's one of the things we want to talk about. There's a lot of discussion on the internet, if you look into uh, burning bushes, uh, about whether or not they're invasive, that should we, uh, can, should we control uh, planting burning bushes. There's four states, um, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, that have outlawed uh, planting and selling burning bushes the rest of the country. A lot of them list them as, as, as list the, excuse me list it as invasive, um, but still allow the sale of it. You can still walk into Walmart and buy a burning bush and, and plant it in your property. So the question is, uh, should you? And and when you go online and you try to find information about this, uh, there's a lot of people who who explain about how oh I've had burning bush planted in my yard for 30 years it hasn't spread at all I'm right next to a natural area and it hasn't spread at all into the natural area. Um, it's it's being overblown. They're just trying to control what I can and can't plant on my property. They're they're taking away my rights. I wanted to to uh, to explore some of the facts about burning bush. First of all, um, the fact that it does produce many seeds. I, I've read posts where they said, oh, I don't, I've never seen it in seed before, so it doesn't it can't be spreading. Um, if you look at this, this is covered. The, most of its red color, color comes from these seeds. There are the fruit and the seed and the little, um, the little uh, leaves that surround it here. Um, there's a lot of seeds here. These seeds get picked up by the birds and spread everywhere. And if at, at the right time of year, right now, what you see is you see in the woods, you see the red of the burning bush and you see the green of the honeysuckle because most of the native plants have, have gone to sleep for the winter. So across the street from where we saw that big beautiful burning bush at the end of someone's driveway is this kind of woodland area and you get a feel for what it does to have that seed source so close to a natural area. All along this fence row is burning bush and honeysuckle. And it goes on. It's hard to make the argument that, oh, these things don't actually seed into the woods. So this obviously was not planted by some homeowner. This was planted by the birds into this woods. So does it really have an impact? I wanted to share with you this hillside that we drive past, which is two doors down from our house. And you can see the impact of the burning bush. It has just filled in this whole hillside. There are red and pink leaves as far as I can see this way. Across the road, there's another hillside that is covered with these red and pink leaves. Is that having an impact on the environment? Between that and the honeysuckles? Yes, it's choking out, it's, it's shading out the, uh, the understory, it's choking out the native plants that should be there and providing very little value to, um, to the, native, uh, the native wildlife that should be living here. So you may ask, and I'm sure someone will, what right do I have to tell somebody else what to do on their own private property? I get this a lot when I talk about invasive species and how you shouldn't plant them on your property. I get the idea that, you know, we're in a free country and you should be able to do what you want to do on your own property. Let me give you an analogy. You could go to the bank today and turn all of your, your lifelong savings into dollar bills and take them out to the end of your driveway and make a big pile and make a bonfire out of them. And that's perfectly within your right. And I may look at you doing that, and I may care about you enough to say, hey, you know, maybe you want to think about this. Is that really what you want to do with your, your money? Um, but if, if in the end, it's your choice to do that. If you choose to do that, though, in the middle of a drought on a windy day, when those flaming dollar bills are flying up and they're spreading down the neighborhood and they're lighting fires all through the neighborhood, you've crossed the line. It is no longer your right to do those types of things. You're impacting the whole neighborhood and by extension, the, the natural areas surrounding the neighborhood, the parks, the recreational areas, okay? Your actions are having an impact more than just what's on your property. If you have the ability to plant burning bushes and autumn olives and these other invasive plants on your property and keep them on your property, more power to you. I would support you 100%. That's your right to do that. 
when it starts spreading over and you start planting it on your property, which then plants it on the neighbor's property, which then plants it on the neighbor's property, which then plants it on public land all around it, that, that's unacceptable. Is it legal? Yes, you're right. It's completely legal. You could do that. Is it the right thing to do? I would say no. You know, think about it a little bit. Don't make your decision based on whether it's, it's, the, it's the legal thing to do. Make your decision about whether it's the right thing to do. Anyway, there's my soapbox for the day. Thanks for coming along.